Hi. So I want to share with you today um, some of an interview that I did a couple of days ago with a gut microbiologist called Dr. Karen Scott. Um, and she works at um, the prestigious Rowett Institute at the University of Aberdeen. And it's her job, along with her colleagues, to um, research the bacteria in our gut. We have good bacteria and bad bacteria. And what they're trying to establish is what influences that and how we can encourage the growth of these good bacteria. So how we can get those good bacteria to flourish in our um, large intestine. So they're also studying the role that individual bacteria play in our gut and in our wider health because it's thought that uh, different bacteria have a different part to play. So there's a huge amount still to be understood and discovered about the role of the gut bacteria. But what we do know through the studies that have been done in the last few years alone is that the bacteria in our gut have an impact on much more than just our digestive system. Um, In fact, as Dr. Karen Scott will explain, um, it can affect multiple aspects of our health, including our mental well-being. And these are areas that are we're just beginning to understand. Um, it can also have an impact on our immune system, which is why diet is becoming so important. It's not just about managing our weight. And we also know about the links between diet and our chances of stroke and heart attack and so on. But really, The role our digestive system plays seems to be more complex and meaningful than even that. And um, by encouraging the right bacteria to flourish in our guts, um, we can really give ourselves the very best shot at having um, good and lasting health um, and fully functioning immune systems as well. Um, It's not the answer to everything, but it is part of the puzzle. So I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Scott about the work that she has been doing and what is understood so far and what we can do right now to boost our gut health. Now it would be great to start by just finding out a little bit about what you do, what your role involves. Yes, I'm a um, gut microbiologist and I research the bacteria that live in the healthy human gut. Mm-hmm. So our our team's working on different ways that we can find to try and identify which bacteria perform important functions in maintaining health. And then as a sort of next step of that, work out ways by which we can ensure that the numbers of those bacteria are maximised and the numbers of bacteria that are perhaps less beneficial are then sort of lowered and by the competition between the good bacteria and the less good bacteria, if you want. One of the things that, um, well, I suppose it's a bit of a source of comfort, uh, really. Um, there, there have been a few studies really showing that actually a good diet, rich in fruit and vegetables and fibre, can be one of the best ways of improving your gut health. Would you agree with that? I think that the more diverse your diet is, the mm-hmm. more diverse the bacteria in your gut. So mm-hmm. all, the, all the different bacteria in the gut like, prefer different substrates to use as food sources. The more diverse your diet is, the more likely you are to be including lots of different foods for all those different bacteria. I think a varied and diverse diet is definitely what I would say is the best way. There are people out there that for whatever reason don't or can't eat as diverse a diet as they should with as much fibre and fruits and vegetables and plants and cereals and all these different sources Mm -hmm. in it. And I think for those people who are lacking that diverse diet, that's when you start needing to think, okay, so I need to supplement my diet in some way by having a specific prebiotic to keep the bacteria going or adding a specific probiotic bacterium 
if I don't have enough of that bacterium anyway. You're quite right. The, the first step would be to have a nice, very diverse diet, definitely. Are there certain probiotics that we should be looking out for that are the, the crucial ones to have, or is it not quite as cut and dried as that? So probiotics vary hugely, okay, because mm -hmm. bacteria are very diverse. So it's almost like if you think of all, um, I all sometimes make the analogy to students that it's like somebody saying to you, oh, I would like a mammal for a pet. <laughs> now, you, that doesn't really give you a lot of clues about what kind of pet they want. You don't know if they want something like an elephant or a mouse or whatever. Yeah. So uh -huh. bacteria are just like that. They're very, very different. So if you have a particular and there are definitely lots of studies that have been done with very specific probiotics that have shown to be effective to alleviate symptoms of very specific diseases. Mm -hmm. But in order to, for that to work for you, you really do need to use that particular probiotic bacterium. Probiotic activities can be divided up into so some of them some of them are generic some of them are relatively specific and some are very specific applying that to our lives and having any idea of what would be useful for us is is kind of nigh on possible no? I, I think it is very challenging for it's even challenging for me so mm. and i yes. know I have, I have a little bit of knowledge so for people who have less knowledge it, it is it's very difficult i think that in general if you if you are wanting a probiotic to just generally, say if you've been on antibiotics. Yes, yeah. One time, so antibiotics that are broad spectrum will kill the bacterium that they're targeted against, but they also mm -hmm. have a activity against your general gut bacteria as well. And that's why quite often when you take antibiotics, you get an upset tummy. And I would say always advise people to take probiotics at that time. With the antibiotic at the same time, or would you say after? When it's me, I, I take them with it and then I keep them going for a while afterwards as well. I mean, I know there are, there have been a few studies that say that that might not be the best thing to do. But in my personal experience, it, it works for me. For other conditions, if you want your probiotic to counteract the symptoms of a very specific disease, I don't know, there's been some studies done with Crohn's disease, for example, then you do need to see which particular probiotic bacterium has been proven to have that effect and use that one. Because if you right. use a different one, it may or may not work. And if it doesn't work, then it's probably not the problem with the probiotic, the problem is that you aren't using the right probiotic. Does the sugar kill the good bacteria? Sugar in itself will not kill them, but if your diet contains a huge mm. amount of highly refined and processed food, then your right. diet itself is containing a lot more sugar. Mm -hmm. But it's actually the fact that all of the food that contains that sugar is highly refined and highly processed which means it's got less fiber in it really. Mm -hmm. And it also means that most of that food then is absorbed in the upper intestine and doesn't reach the large intestine. And it's the food that reaches the large intestine that's really important for yeah. the growth of the vast number of these bacteria. So that's where the huge population of bacteria that we, it's essential to our health. They live in the yes. large intestine. Fermented foods definitely play an uh -huh. important role. So, I mean, they're, I'm not so familiar with the literature on fermented foods, mm -hmm. but there certainly is a growing body of evidence that people who consume quite a lot of fermented foods tend to have a healthier gut microbiota. Any other tips around um, gut health? The bottom line is that anything that's bad for us is bad for our gut bacteria, yeah. really. Yeah. So, I mean, we all know smoking is bad for us. Yes. And it, will affect bacteria um, we all know that drinking too much alcohol is also bad for us and it will affect our yeah. bacteria and you yeah. know that yourself the effects of too much alcohol has on your stomach anyway so you know yes. it's having I'm not one of those people who doesn't ever drink because it might affect my gut bacteria I think yeah. moderation yeah. in all things there's nothing yes. wrong with that so um, I think I mean I think it goes back to what you touched on at the very start that 
if you have a good, healthy, diverse diet, yeah. and that includes what liquids you consume as well, then that's good for your gut bacteria. I mean, some of the phytochemicals and things that would be included in certain types of alcohol have been shown to be beneficial. And one of those, one of the ways that that beneficial effect is manifested is probably through the action of gut bacteria as well. So I think moderation and diversity really are really key points. What do you think that, uh, based on what you've seen, our, our gut health can actually do for the I rest think, of our yeah, body? Yeah, I think in the past we thought that our foods and our gut microbiota really only impacted on our gut health. Mm-hmm. But we now, do, we're becoming more and more aware that the um, products of the gut microbiota, so the metabolic products of those gut bacteria, are absorbed into the bloodstream and then circulate around the body. And during that circulation around the body, they interact with different receptors in different sites in the body, and that's what then has this effect on other parts of our health. And the gut-brain axis is something that's become we've become quite aware of in the last decade, say, mm-hmm. and certainly in the last few years, there's more and more research being done. And I think there, there's quite strong evidence that links specific signaling factors from the gut microbiota with, um, well, there's two examples that I can think of offhand, one of which is the satiety. So how our brain responds to food and how full we feel is potentially linked to the products of some of the bacteria in the gut as they're digesting the food as well. So that's That's one of the things. And also some signals that other bacteria in the gut produce can interact with our sort of well-being center in the brain because there's been some links of some bacteria and depression, for example. So there are definitely things going on there. We're very... We're at the very early stages of the research into really the mechanisms of this Mm -hmm. all. And I mean, it's a really interesting area. And I think in the next few years, we're going to understand a lot more about that. And I think that's a really interesting one. There's also um, evidence that what the bacteria in the gut do impacts on cardiovascular disease as well. So there's some metabolites that are linked to that. I think they're, they're, we're becoming more aware of various different diseases all all yeah. over the body types that are linked through to what our gut bacteria do. There's so much more to come on this, isn't there? We're at the very early stages of this research, and yeah. I think it's, it's a very exciting area, actually. I mean, even, even this current COVID epidemic that we're in, potentially there also are factors that may be linked through to the gut microbiota that could end up being important. I mean, the studies really haven't been done yet, but we know that certain bacteria have receptors for viruses and potentially there are things there as well, but we really, we really don't know anything about them at the moment. No, no. I think sometimes it's frustrating because you, the more you find out, the more you realize there is to learn. So it's, yes. um, we're really at the beginning of so much of this, but yeah, we're, we're further ahead than we were when I started this 20 years ago. So Absolutely. Yeah, great. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching another Honest video. There are lots of videos on this channel covering everything from health to uh, domestic cleaning products to beauty. Check it out. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.